Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's live webcast to share the findings of HLP's Global Survey of Business Leaders 2022. Um, over the last quarter of 2021, our team at HLB have surveyed clients and non-clients across the globe to get their take on how enterprises are innovating with more speed and confidence than prior to the pandemic. Um, we're really excited to share the numbers of, uh, of our survey this year. So let's start with looking at some backgrounds on our research. We've uh, surveyed nearly uh, 600 senior business executives this year from across uh, 46 countries and a wide range of different um, sector backgrounds. Uh, in addition to our quantitative research, we've also conducted a number of uh, qualitative um, uh, in-depth interviews um, with subject, subject matter experts around innovation and leadership, and we shared uh, the survey sort of findings uh, with them to get their um, expertise uh, view on them. In particular, the themes this year, uh, we've asked business leaders uh, what they're doing to innovate, to grow and compete. Uh, we looked at what uh, the enablers and the barriers to innovation are, but we've also asked them about their views on the global economy, their growth prospects, and what kind of risk they are um, expecting to face in, in 2022. Um, I'm really excited to um, introduce our panel this year. So uh, with me, I have um, HOB CEO, Marco Donzelli. Uh, welcome, Marco. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, uh, and uh, we have on the panel, moving from east to west, uh, Christine Kai, partner at our HOB firm in Shanghai. Um, Ralph Mitchison, partner here uh, based in London, and Marianne Kaler, partner out of our uh, Los Angeles um, HOB firm. How, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, now, before I hand over to Marco, I would just like to um, make a couple of remarks on the Q&A. Um, for anyone listening in today, if you have any questions you want to put to our panel, uh, please use the Q&A box on your screen. Um, you can also join the conversation on Twitter using our campaign hashtag um, survey of business leaders. Uh, you will see it um, in, your, in the corner of your screen as well. Uh, and we will be keeping a close eye on both the Q&A and, and the Twitter conversation so that towards the end of our discussion, we will uh, leave some room for questions. Um, now, Marco, I'd like to hand over to you. Would you like to take us through the theme of this year's survey? Sure, thank you, Leslie. Well, we can summarize uh, uh, maybe 2021 um, as, uh, as being uh, another very difficult year, of course. Um, the pandemic played a major, a major role um, but uh, um, I would say that uh, last year, uh, in, our, in our meeting, in our event last year, we talked about the importance of courage, of leadership, and so on, and uh, the importance of uh, um, innovation um, and the leadership to just push innovation to overcome these difficult times. So what we saw um, was a great um, confidence, um, especially, of course, in the healthcare sector, where um, companies, of course, I don't have to name them, uh, but Moderna, Pfizer, and so on, they were able to um, innovate at an unprecedented speed uh, so that we could all get uh, our vaccines. So that, that ability uh, to innovate so fast um, is something that probably we have, we have never seen in recent times. It can be, can be uh, compared probably to what we saw in the industrial revolution where you know we could see very very fast uh, changes in such a very short time frame and this tells us a lot about the confidence um about you know about the confidence that business leaders feel uh felt over the year and hopefully they will feel in the year in the year to come so just to read some stats so 86 percent of business leaders have told us that they're more confident in their ability to innovate as pre-pandemic. So arguably, even if pandemic has carried a lot of uh, things that we didn't want, maybe um, had uh, has brought us something, something good. Uh, and of course, it's normal that in difficult times, people need to, be, to find ways uh, to go ahead 
uh, and to and to change. And and though in those difficult times, we see the opportunities uh, arise. On the top of that, I would like to have outline that nine out of ten people, uh, ten business leaders, agree that market disruption motivates them to innovate. And 26, 27 percent actually strongly agree in this case. The same is with the, um, the willingness to challenge the way things get done in their own organizations. And 93% say they feel confident about that. And 89% indicate that they're able to innovate with even greater speed than in the past. Those are very solid uh, um, indicators. But also one thing that I would like to um, highlight is 90% of business leaders we surveyed agree that more rapid and effective innovation is critical to future growth. So basically, innovation is the theme of this, of this year. So we have to expect a lot of innovation. Um, and uh, um, in fact, actually, respondents also estimated 22% of the new growth will come from innovation. We, we cannot not see that coming. And we believe this is going to be the theme of the year, Leslie. Thank you. Thanks, Marco. Uh, do you think that um, considering the, the current macro environment around the economy, the ongoing pandemic, are you surprised that business leaders are as optimistic as they are? And um, how, how do they think they compare to their competition? Well, what we, what we see in the, in the answers is that uh, business leaders feel um, that they are more innovative than their competition. So that, that is a clear sign um, of confidence. Um, we did see this also, I think, last year. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, we need to discount this so because not everybody is better than the other. Otherwise, then who's going to be better, right? So, mm -hmm. but uh, and nevertheless, uh, so this is a very good sign of confidence. In fact, confidence in their ability to grow the business grew of 9% compared to last year. Now, what this leaves us with is anyway, a, a potential execution gap or a, a, at least a potential execution question mark. So are we able to execute on our plans? Are we able to really innovate? Are we able to transform this confidence in something concrete, tangible? So I think this is a, I, I think this is a, a side challenge that, uh, that we have. Yes, absolutely. And and yeah, you're right. We cannot all be more than average innovative, right? That's, that's statistically just not, not possible. Um, okay, so considering the um, uh, the levels of, of optimism, I would like to uh, turn to Christine now and hear from you what are leaders saying about their priorities and uh, their time efforts in 2022? How, how are they looking to execute, as, as Marco was saying? Uh, thanks, Leslie. Uh, according to our survey, uh, over two-thirds of respondents polled selected improving operational effectiveness as the top action business leaders are taking this year. Um, in currently, they, their second priority as they seek out fresh growth opportunities is launching new products and services. This appears to support their ambitious plans to innovate. Uh, however, uh, cost reductions remains a priority action for this coming year, as is adopting new technologies. Yeah. Can see this? Yeah. Seen, yeah. Um, so I guess what we've heard from, from Marco is that business leaders are confident and optimistic this year. but. As you're stating, they're also aware of the multiple uh, disruptions and, and risks in the marketplace. So, um, thinking about innovation, to successfully uh, deliver innovation, there are a couple of challenges that business leaders need to overcome that we've identified in our research this year. Um, in fact, the, the three um, main barriers to successful innovation that we found are, uh, first of all, funding, but also talent and uh, cultural aspects, organizational barriers. Um, in our report this year, we go into each of these three sections and um, share some ideas and recommendations on how to um, mitigate some of these challenges, how to overcome the, the barriers. 
um, but maybe Marianne, would you like to um, share a bit of background from the survey on uh, the first one around funding? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, Leslie. Um, so, you know, when we think about this, um, setting aside additional funding for innovation has always proved challenging. I don't think this time is any different than any other. And then when you consider the fact that um, there's the need to focus on operational effectiveness and cost cutting during these past two years, um, it's not a surprise that over three quarters of the leaders we polled indicate they are funding their innovation strategies out of regular cash flow. Over a quarter are looking to debt funding and a quarter through raising equity funding. The top two responses on our risk to business question this year were economic uncertainty and inflation not really a surprise, but those are likely to restrict cash flow and potentially multiply the costs of debt financing. A uh, few leaders were exploring, you know, fairly creative funding solutions such as looking to government and NGO grants or even crowdfunding to finance their innovation, which is interesting. But overall, 55% of respondents have a specific, have a specific budget set aside for innovation, which sounds encouraging unless you consider the fact that that means 45% of business leaders do not set aside a budget for innovation. The glass is half full or half empty, depending on how you look at that. Um, but certainly many kinds of innovation, such as research and development and new product development are likely to require sufficient funding. However, if we think about the true meaning of, meaning of innovation, which you know, is one of those words that we can define a number of different ways depending on how we mean it, but I wrote down something that I thought was an interesting definition. A practical implementation of creativity and ideas to create value. If you take that into account, then funding is not necessarily needed, per se, to drive innovation in your company. Um, we've seen a lot of examples from clients um, throughout the pandemic and, in fact, um, you know, how they used innovation and pivoted to succeed with their, with their businesses to, despite challenges. And um, a lot of those pivots, as evidenced in the report, tend to circle around things like supply chain you know, for uh, distributors, manufacturers, um, even those in um, the food industry, of course, healthcare, um, talent, um, huge one that we're all, you know, still dealing with in, in a major way. And then consumer behavior, all of those disruptions um, caused uh, companies to consider how they needed to pivot um, due to the disruption. So I was contemplating, you know, our, our clients and a, a number of different ways that were so thrilling that we saw our um, clients ideally, you know, with our support, you know, how, how could they pivot uh, during this time? And one story kind of jumped out that I wanted to share with everyone. And it's a world renowned museum, actually, that is a client of ours. And um, they quickly pivoted to thrive. So when you think about going to a museum, imagine having a museum and not being able to have anyone come in to see your exhibits, right? That's a, a pretty profound challenge. Admissions were 40% of the operating revenue. So of course, from a staffing standpoint, that's where most of the staff was focused, was on the admissions of uh, the, the visitors. So positions um, were then repurposed for a, a virtual environment. Um, the day after the museum closed due to the pandemic, they set upon filming virtual tours of the space, which they had never done before. And then when you think about um, visiting a museum in real life and how you navigate the space, maybe you spend the day or half a day or something significant like that, a virtual tour has to be contemplated very differently, doesn't it? Like what is the hook to get a virtual visitor? So they had to contemplate 15 minute increments for visitation so that they could kind of keep the engagement up. Going back to your funding question, um, after pitching a virtual slash digital 
experience, the budget <clears throat> was approved, which was not insignificant, as you can imagine, right? So they had to come up with the funding for a, a virtual experience. But now the museum can advance forward with a hybrid model into the future with a greatly expanded visitor and donor footprint that they didn't have before the pandemic. And lo and behold, one side fact, their virtual fundraiser was the most profitable they ever had. Um, so with the right culture, with bold leadership, um, with an entrepreneurial mindset, what we saw through this example was that these kinds of innovations are certainly possible. Um, but coming back to your question about the barriers to innovate, we found mm -hmm. through this year's research, funding is absolutely seen as a top barrier to innovate. Thank you, Marianne. And thank you for sharing that example. That is that is great. I think um, so much has come out of, of this, this crisis in the pandemic. And that's, that's an excellent example. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Um, so turning to you, Ralph, so we've explored the, the barrier around funding, which is, um, as Marianne just, uh, just mentioned, the top uh, barrier um, identified through our research. Um, what other barriers to successful innovation did the survey uncover? Yeah, that, thanks, Leslie. So yes, of course, funding is, is very important. However, of course, innovation is driven by people. So arguably the most uh, difficult barrier businesses are facing, the faster and more successfully innovate is access to talented people with the right capabilities. Um, the capabilities of people is, the se is second from the top in the list of barriers to corporate innovation. And just 53% of business leaders agree or strongly agree that their workforce actually has the skills to successfully innovate. This isn't really surprising given the state of the current labor market. There's shortages everywhere. And employers are finding that both the retention of their best, most talented staff and the recruitment of new staff is extremely challenging. Senior executives we surveyed uh, see talent as a focal point for innovation, selected, over, uh, by, selected by over 40%, which supports the continued transformation we're seeing in the world of work. Um, Talent acquisition is now identified as the second greatest area of weakness leaders intend to improve upon in 2022. And that was cited by 42% of leaders. Um, and by comparison, uh, in last year's survey, that number was just 26%. So that's up 16% on the previous year. Yeah. Yes, indeed, um, talent scarcity is, is a big macro trend affecting all this moment. Um, I mean, I think even within our own firms, we are feeling the, the effect of that, of course. Um, Ralph, what did the survey this year uncover about uh, the power of diversity in your workforce? Yeah, so diversity. So 92% of leaders we surveyed agree that a more diverse workforce improves their ability to innovate. And one in three business leaders answered that question either strongly or strongly, strongly agreed or agreed. Um, it echoes last year's findings, which where we found that 82% of leaders told us they believe a commitment to building a more diverse workforce and inclusive workforce will result in better financial performance. Um, the good news here is that this is something that we can reasonably easily change, is in the power of business leaders to change. Um, smart businesses are ensuring that they have good diversity of staff and diversity of thought to provide str a strong basis for their innovative strategies. Thank you, Ralph. Yes, that is very interesting indeed. So if we um, focus on diversity in our um, uh, recruitment efforts, then that will definitely boost yeah. innovation, it, it sounds like. Um, and it's also really interesting and, and good to see that um, what we found in our survey last year uh, still holds up with our findings this year. Yeah. I'm quite happy about that as well. Um, okay, so I would like to hand back to Christine now, actually, and ask you about uh, what, what we found um, around organizational barriers to successful innovation. Okay, and Leslie, um, I think to the continued disruptions of the pandemic and its consequences for the global economy, it's not surprising that lack of time was cited 
as the third major barrier to innovation. So, so every everyone is saying that okay, we, we are we are we are short of hands and short of time. So, so business leaders uh, recognized the need for free time and headspace to stimulate uh, innovations to take place, uh, but are not finding as much time they need to do so. So, in fact, this year uh, operational effect effectiveness is yet again identified as the number one weakness within the business senior executives uh, plan to focus on in 2022, uh, cited by 43% of respondents. This finding is actually up 8% uh, po uh, percentage points from last year, uh, il illustrating the focus on efficiency to save time and create more speedy uh, processes to solve this lack of time uh, barrier. So as we can see that in the healthcare and life science industry, organizations will need to get more agile in how they develop new ideas, implement business model changes and get new offerings to the market faster than, than ever before due to this uh, pandem pandemic impact. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> um, it's curious uh, that the, it, it's curious that these these uh, barriers are the ones that we've identified, and 62% uh, of business leaders agree that they can innovate at, at greater speed than in the past. Right. So on one hand, they're saying we don't have the people and the capabilities, and and especially the time. But on the other hand, they are also confident in their ability to innovate at speed. Um, yeah, that, that's quite interesting. Uh, what what other uh, barriers did the survey uncover besides um, uh, lack of time? Yeah, uh, uh, it, this uh, this lack of time uh, is followed by a range of barriers to successful innovation, uh, which are either organizational or uh, cultural factors, which will sound very familiar to all of us. Uh, including uh, something like a lack of vision, a desire to keep the status quo, or a lack of quality data, corporate politics, unsuitable culture, or a plain fear of change. So all these kinds of uh, factors will, 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 will be also the range of barriers yeah, to the successful innovation, according to our survey. Yeah, thank you, Christine. It sounds like they're all interlinked, all these organizational barriers and uh, the, the, the people uh, related barrier that, that Ralph just mentioned, they are all um, somehow related. And actually, it sounds like spending more time on fixing the organizational cultural aspect uh, might actually help business leaders uh, to enable innovation more successfully. And uh, that might actually also mitigate the, um, uh, the, the barrier of uh, lack of funding um, to Marianne, her, her example of the museum earlier, um, as she said, bold leadership and the right people can make a huge difference in your innovation um, capacity. Um, Marianne, maybe you want to share uh, a bit more on um, enablers of innovation? Yes, I'd love to. This is a, a favorite of mine. Um, as chief strategy officer for my firm, this is my um, um, I'm in my wheelhouse, as the as they say. <laughs> um, so uh, so yes, um, you know, technology is a top enabler of innovation, and that won't surprise any of, any of us. And we'll explore that in a moment. But all of the other top enablers of successful innovation can only be deployed if the right culture, the right conditions, and actually incentives are in place for our people to interpret them. So customer feedback was selected by 32% of respondents. Big data and data analytics, 29%. New knowledge, 28%. But as I said, how is that being interpreted? And frankly, how is that being actioned um, beyond just the information that we receive, right? So 
as we learned in the healthcare sector, the pandemic has accelerated speed to market. There's no question about that. And business leaders agree that more rapid and effective innovation is critical to future growth. So innovation that creates long-term value goes beyond a one-off pivot or temporary transition to an alternative path during the rough times. How often do we see uh, a solution, a change implemented that is then abandoned when the crisis has passed? So part of the call to action is how are we taking advantage of the current environment, but weaving that effectively into our long-term strategy? So to bear sustainable results, it requires continual, mindful, and frankly, deliberate action by leaders and employees. And that last point to say employees is really important because it can't be leaders alone that are driving innovation. It has to be a mindset that is encouraged across an enterprise so that the wisdom that exists at all levels and you know, across different areas in an organization are, are taken into account. In fact, when we asked business leaders about factors that enable innovation, bold leadership was sec the second most common factor identified. But I, I have a feeling it's similar to what Marco said before, we're, we're pointing a finger at someone else's bold leadership, perhaps rather than our own. And so sometimes we have to say, where are we being bold and how are we sustaining that? This was echoed by the experts in the field that we interviewed in the qualitative part of our research. Um, they unanimously agreed that the most important factor for successful innovation is for bold leaders to challenge convention, to question, you know, that 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 thing we always say if if we're if if we're doing things the way we've always done them. We have to really question that um, amongst ourselves. And to create the right organizational culture for people and ideas to flourish. And that can have a price tag, but it is not always dependent on money or on time necessarily. So I think the importance is to weave those two. We talked about funding. How do we make sure that we have an innovation budget proactively, but also how are we creating an environment and a space for great ideas and for time to contemplate those, those ideas? Yes, thank you, Marianne. I think um, that's, that's really interesting and I think really encouraging for many business leaders who worry about uh, capacity, right? The, the, the financial capacity, the, the lack of time that, that we've just um, uh, discussed um, to take on additional objectives around their innovation strategy for the year. Um, and yeah, that, that working on setting the right culture, having the right leadership, the right mindset is actually a, a key enabler and overcome some of those. Um, those capacity barriers that we've discussed. Um, good. So moving on to the topic of technology, because I'm sure that um, this is a, uh, we have a lot of ideas around as well. Um, technology coming out as a key enabler. Christine, um, may I hand back over to you? Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, we all know that from last year's uh, research that technology has been and it continues to be a transform transformative force. So, so for this year, we, we are not surprised to learn that technology is, is also the top focus area for innovation, according to our survey. And also it's closely followed by uh, new product, product development. So in our view, uh, these two things are closely linked as the vast majority of the products and services we are using depending on the technology in one form or another. Yeah, so, so you can uh, see in our, uh, in, in our slides that all those uh, uh, technologies actually uh, put, 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 put through to, to those uh, new, new products and services. Um, so so uh, we can see that technology is top of the list of factors which business leaders think uh, that will aid their organization in improving their capabilities to innovate. Uh, again, this, this doesn't come as a surprise to use if we think of 
innovation and the technology as connected at, at the hip with uh, innovation often aimed at new products and the services development. So we can see that in China, uh, actually we currently uh, 5G and also AI are very commonly adopted in our uh, normal life. Like in a pandemic, uh, we, we, use, uh, we use a lot of uh, AI technologies in identifying you know, people when, when, when people get into a certain, certain areas. And, and to identify uh, uh, whether you, you you got vaccinated or not. So, so all these technologies uh, uh, impact our life uh, and, and, and give us new products and services. And also in terms of areas of weakness for the business, all, over uh, almost one third of leaders are looking to improve their digital capabilities in 2022, and a fifth focus in, on improving cybersecurity. So, so I think uh, all these uh, uh, business leaders will will think those are the major weakness for for the business and the need to improve in the coming years. Thank you, Christine. Yes, you're you're right. We're so dependent on digital technologies nowadays, and. Um, your your example around um, uh, if you're being vaccinated or, or like the track and trace apps that we're now all all using and, and are so used to everything runs on these digital technologies of course. Um, Christine, you already mentioned uh, 5G and AI in your example as uh, important uh, forms of digital tech in, in China. Um, oh. Ralph, if I may turn to you, uh, what did our survey say about the different kinds of technologies that CEOs have their eye on? Yeah, thanks, Leslie. I mean, it's clear that, that harnessing emerging technologies are, are critical for successful innovation. Almost half of business leaders ranked cloud computing as the most important digital technology for achieving future success. Um, business leaders also ranked uh, AI at 43% and machine learning at 32% as important for innovation. Um, what's interesting, however, is that almost a fifth of business leaders considered their digital infrastructure a barrier uh, that hindered their organization from innovating. Um, so that's further evidence that, that business leaders are deploying these technologies to remove some of the friction, um, which uses time and energy to slow down innovation. Um, emerging digital tech will help um, free up employees to uh, deploy them on more creative and innovative plans. Um, what we've also found is that businesses are looking beyond digital technology for uh, other opportunities to innovate. Um, when asked which three uh, technological advancements they might think would be most important to contribute to their business success in the future, uh, the respondents said renewable energy, solar, wind, and tidal energy. Um, they were cited by 61% of respondents, uh, followed by electrification at 46% and battery storage at 34%. So many breakthrough ideas, uh, methodologies, services and products are popping up um, in other technological realms. Um, and this is in line with the finding that 33% of business leaders are focusing on sustainability this year. Yes, that is very promising indeed. That, that number went up uh, quite a lot from, from last year. And uh, I am certainly really happy to see that there's a shift towards using um, um, these new types of technologies that are more sustainable and more focused on sustainability in the environment. And that uh, the, the attention for innovation is uh, shifting towards sustainability by one third of our respondents. Um, so yeah, so we, we spoke a lot about um, innovation, looking inwards uh, in terms of uh, barriers to overcome when it comes to organization, people, time, funding, um, but also we looked at the, the enablers technology and bold leadership being the, the key enablers. Now, um, if we look at uh, the growth prospects of, of business leaders, um, Mark, I would like to hand back over to you. What are, what are business leaders um, expecting in terms of growth this year? Yeah, uh, thank you, Ashley. The, the most important thing is that the, the majority of business leaders think that global growth is likely to increase over the next 12 months. Now, 
considering the current uh, uh, markets, the current scenario, uh, this is a very good news. <laughs> so um, uh, we know that a, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, what happens in the market and so on, uh, at least is driven by um, by let's say sentiment. So if companies are going to grow, then definitely all the rest is going to come, um, you know, in a positive fashion. So, in fact, the confidence in the global economy, even if the current situation is not, uh, doesn't look, uh, let's say, the best in the, in, in the last uh, over the last uh, few years, well, has nearly doubled compared to last year. So uh, that is very important. Uh, in fact. There is uh, um, that confidence that we talked about before, that clearly uh, comes up from this uh, uh, from this survey uh, this year. In fact, confidence is up nine percent again uh, from from last year. Um, you know, basically, uh, the majority of business leaders also believe they are able to innovate with more success compared to pre-pandemic levels. And again, innovation will be an enabler. Of growth. Um, so again, um, and this is all in a situation full of uh, uh, obstacles, um, rocky markets, various concerns and threats. So, and maybe talking about uh, you know these kind of risks, and I wanted to ask uh, Ralph's opinion uh, on this. Yeah, um, I mean. So it's very positive that uh, our survey is showing that, that business leaders are very confident in achieving growth and achieving faster innovation. Um, but there are a number of risks which, which the survey identified uh, that despite COVID, the risk of COVID now dissipating, um, the other top risks that, that, that um, our respondents identified were was economic uncertainty at 65%, Inflation at 61%, cybersecurity at 57%, access to talent, which we've already covered, at 56%, and tax rates. So um, all, of the, all of these risks could easily derail um, progressive plans to, to innovate. Um, these risks are fundamental, um, and it's not a binary choice. So it's not protect or innovate. Business leaders have to do both. So we have to protect and innovate at the same time. Yeah, and I think one other factor to consider is, uh, well, if uh, interest rates are uh, going to rise even more than expected over the next few months, then in response to inflation, then of course, then companies uh, will, will not find it uh, beneficial anymore to, you know, get money uh, from banks, and then w would that money be destined to, let's say, growth or innovation? So there, there are like a number of concerns and. Um, but that confidence from business leaders, uh, it's very, very reassuring. And to me, what's clear it's, is that, yes, on one side, that there is you know, deficiency, it's always there, um, because you need to look at your costs and so on. But uh, um, I would say that uh, attention is now turning more and more towards the creation of new sustainable marketing opportunities, uh, market opportunities, and uh, uh, innovation, again, is a key enabler. So if we have seen, uh, innovation, um, let's say, being such a strong actor in 2021 in the healthcare sector, especially with the vaccines and, and you know new new products coming in the market so fast, breakthrough innovations. Then can we see the same happening in uh, other uh, spectrum of lives uh, and of business? So that's the. Uh, the most important question that we need to ask ourselves, as well as uh, um, is this going to be a very fast innovation uh, in the same wise that we saw uh, with the uh, with the medical in the medical in the medical space. So that's that's I think uh, what we are going to see in uh, 2022, and we will see each other next year and and see if uh, if that actually became reality. Yes, perhaps an interesting angle for next year's survey, Marco, to, to consider. Um, I'm, I'm seriously hoping that we see those numbers around innovation geared towards sustainability are, are going to go up next year. 
Um, excellent. OK, so I think we covered a lot of the themes from our survey. Um, I actually would like to spend some time on, on Q&A and turn it to our audience. Um, we have a couple of questions uh, for our panelists, but by all means, if you are uh, listening in and you have a question you want to put to our panel, um, please use the function. Uh, as a reminder, you can, of course, also join the conversation on Twitter using our hashtag, um, hashtag survey of business leaders. Um, so any questions that you want to share via Twitter, um, feel free to do so and, and we, will, uh, we will get to those. Um, good. Okay, so first question, and I think I would like to direct this one at Marianne. Um, based on, on your experience uh, with clients in Los Angeles, uh, what do you think are the lessons for the future um, that CEOs should, should take away from the, the beginning of the pandemic that when uh, they were forced to innovate? Yeah, I, I love this question, Leslie. Thank you. Um, so, you know, it, preparing for us coming together today, you know, and sifting through the data from the survey, um, the biggest takeaway that I'm left with is how do we embolden the actions we take as leaders to innovate regardless of the levels of disruption we're dealing with? And what, what do I mean by that? Marco started off at the beginning uh, of the, the panel today by telling us that 95% of business leaders agree that increased innovation is needed for future growth. So 95% of the, the leaders that we talked to said, if I don't innovate, I can't grow. But yet 22% uh, they, they said that 22% of future growth will come from innovation, okay? So is that a good number? Is that a good correlation or not? I don't know. But, but I suspect that it's a little bit of uh, do what I say and not what I do, um, because I think that, um, you know, uh, we have to ask ourselves, as, as was evidenced in, what we talked about in some of the data, some questions that we have to think about. And frankly, I think about these all the time for, for my own organization. Do we have the right culture to innovate? Uh, do our people understand their role in innovation? And again, that's leaders and employees, right? Everyone in the organization, do, do they know their role to innovate? Do we have the right conditions for ideas to flourish? Often, it's not a lack of ideas, it's getting ideas into the right space and connecting those ideas with resources, whether it's dollars, whether it's people, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, to give it the airtime to flourish. Um, are incentives in place? And I don't want that overlooked because what we know statistically is that in the absence of incentives, it tends not to occur within an organization for innovation to be propelled. So how is innovation being prioritized in, within our organization? Do we have incentives in place for that? So these are things I think a lot about. Um, as businesses continue to focus on operational and cost effectiveness, they need to include ways to pivot and innovate into the future. So what we talked about were, are there dollars set aside? And are there these conditions and, and environments that allow innovation to thrive? And frankly, I'm gonna put a hypothesis out there that's not tested within the survey, but I'll pose it to us as leaders. If we do not have an internal culture of innovation, isn't it true that we will always need to go outside for ideas and creative solutions? So in a sense, if we don't have a foundational culture of innovation or an entrepreneurial mindset that can spur and action ideas, it may be more expensive because you're continually transactionally paying outside for the smart people outside your organization to tell you what to do rather than the smart people inside your organization to be able to be a part of it and have skin in the game. Um, so um, 
you know, Marco also mentioned something. He said nine out of ten leaders um, said that market disruption motivates them to innovate. Um, and I would say that they need to include ways to pivot and innovate into the future. They've already proven that under pressure it can be done. And how do we take that lesson into whether it's disruptive? I, I, I'm actually not thinking we're going to have less disruption in the next year. I think it might be different, to, but I think we'll continue to have disruption. But how do we take those lessons of the last two years and apply them going forward? Whether there is the same or different or, or less disruption, um, we've proven that we can do it. So those are my thoughts. I don't know if anyone on the panel has disagreement or wants to test that, but I, I feel really energized by that concept coming out of the report. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Marianne. Um, okay, I have um, another question here that I would like to direct to Christine. Um, Christine, you mentioned the importance of 5G and AI in products and services innovation in China. Um, where do you expect to see innovation come from in, in this year? For example, sustainability or like other products, supply chain? Um, yeah. Okay, th thanks, Leslie. Uh, I, I think, I think uh, innovation actually comes from, from people's needs or requirement, right? Uh, daily life. So, so uh, according to our our firm's observation, because we 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 did a lot of financial due diligence uh, for venture capitals and private equities, and we, we saw a lot of uh, uh, high, high tech uh, technology uh, companies uh, with innovations, and, and and actually when we interviewed with those business leaders, we are we we. Always asking where do you find those uh, innovation opportunities, and most of them they, they will tell us that they they they, they are quite uh, focused on the whole society structure and all, also some uh, you know uh, uh, some uh, some uh, uh, external world uh, trend, technology trend, and also uh, uh, business trend to to seek for uh, innovation opportunities. So, so uh, we saw a lot of uh, interested uh, actors, uh, uh, for example, uh, like uh, population change or the concept change in China. So you can see that in, in current days, actually the aging population and a series of uh, uh, business opportunities brought by it, such as uh, nursing homes, in insurance, tourists, education for the elderly, peoples and so on are very hot in China. So, so you can see that uh, China's uh, demographic changes uh, will bring a lot of uh, opportunities for enterprise innovation. So, 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 the, uh, so the companies will, will, will analyze all those uh, uh, needs from, uh, from these changes and they will, they will create new services and uh, new, new products according to the needs. And also, uh, besides for the uh, population structure change, uh, change of uh, concept will also bring a lot of uh, opportunities uh, to innovation. So looking back to the development of China in the past two decades, uh, we can find that some ideas have completely changed uh, compared with uh, 40 years ago. You know, so, so we can see that uh, uh, we can see that uh, the rise of middle class actually driv has driven a, a lot in our society, like a real estate industry, automobile, uh, culture, and educational industries. And also, of course, uh, according to uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic impact, our, the, the realization of the importance of medical and health care also driven uh, the medical and healthcare industry to, to a, a, a new height. Um, so, so a lot of, uh, we saw a lot of innovation in, in these uh, industries, yeah. And also uh, due to the uh, air pollution and also environmental uh, uh, protections, 
this kind of concept change, uh, we can see that uh, 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 Ch Chinese government are encouraging uh, new energy automobile industries to boom. So, 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 so uh, we have the statistics here. Like in 2021, uh, in China, the, the sale, the sales of uh, the sales volume of a new energy automobile reaches uh, three million. Yeah, yeah, 3.5 million in China. So, so which which increased about uh, 1.6 times compared compared with last year. So, so I think all these. Uh, all these factors uh, makes the innovation. Uh, 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 we can see that uh, all these uh, factors lead to different innovations in different uh, uh, industry. So, so we, we really look forward to 2022 because uh, because I think it's already to this. Uh, I hope that it 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 is already comes to the end of the whole pandemic and. And, and all the you know all all the society life will come to uh, come back to normal, and and we can see more opportunities in the communication, uh, 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 internet, and also entertainment after after the pandemic. So so this is uh, what our firm's observation on that. Great, thank you, thank you for sharing that. That that's um um. That's promising. I, I especially, again, like uh, what you're sharing about sustainability and the uh, uh, encouragement of government in China to, to think about um, sustainable um, alternatives. Um, I have a couple more questions um, coming in, just looking at the time, we've got 10 minutes left. So I think I'll, I'll have one for Ralph and one for um, Marco before we wrap up. Um, Ralph, maybe if I can start with you, you are, um, of course, our uh, global real estate sector expert. Um, and I have a question here uh, around your, uh, your role in that in terms of um, developments. Uh, what kind of developments have you seen in the property space in relation to hybrid offices? Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I think when the, when the pandemic hit and, and everyone started working from home, we suddenly realized that um, perhaps the genie was out the bottle, that we could trust staff and actually people could work very effectively from home. But of course, that, that's uh, a huge problem for the property sector, potentially, um, because if everyone's working from home, they're not using office space. Um, in fact, I think, I think the property sector is very innovative. So we've been talking about innovation today. And, and firstly, some properties perhaps, you know, won't be suitable always to to be adapted but so some properties have been repurposed for residential purposes so so some commercial surplus commercial space has been repurposed and there is quite a high demand for residential property around the world at the moment um, in terms of commercial property what 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 owners are doing and, and businesses are doing are are redesigning the interior so to make the um the spaces much more suitable for hybrid working um, so actually, I was reading the paper yesterday, uh, the Evening Standard in London, and actually Citibank announced a £100 million refurbishment of their tower in Canary Wharf, um, which is a 42-storey um, tower, and that, that I believe is the largest refurbishment project in Europe at the moment. So what they're doing is, is they'll be, one, one, they're actually making their building much more uh, sustainable and environmentally friendly. And two, they're redesigning the interior to be more, more of a flexible working space. Um, so more breakout rooms, because what will happen in the future is, is some staff will definitely be working from the office, but some staff will be working from home. So workspaces need to adapt to enable people to have hybrid meetings where five people are in the office, five people are on, on video screens. Um, Likewise, Google has um, eagerly just announced a, a large further investment in their campus in the UK. Um, and they have concepts called team pods, which, is a, which are flexible working spaces within the offices where the space can be repurposed and redesigned, reconfigured. So it's desk chairs, whiteboards, uh, video conferencing. Um, they have a thing called a campfire room, uh, which I quite like the concept. You can visualize a campfire room. So a campfire room is obviously, you know, again, that concept of people collaborating to create innovation within the office space. So office spaces are going to be perhaps slightly less crowded, 
but they're going to they're going to facilitate collaboration within the space. Because I think people are going to go there more to to have face to face meetings and have to have to introduce uh, colleagues. And again, Microsoft has the same the same policy. So Microsoft again, uh, uh, I think they have a, a circular room they've designed with where basically you're looking everyone in the eye. I, I think it's uh, so so the spaces have been re repurposed. So so the the, uh, the real estate market isn't isn't it definitely isn't gone. And actually, there's some very substantial uh, investments in exi in new buildings, but also in existing buildings in terms of repurposing and making them more environmentally friendly and making them more fit for purpose for the new working world. Uh, hey, just, well, as you say, although it wasn't in the question, perhaps if you look at residential as well, I, I think on residential property, there what's going to happen is designers are going to look at uh, building facilities within homes that, and, that facilitate home working. So at the moment, people are on, on their dining room tables, um, on their on their sofas, but in the future, the new new properties, yeah, as we all are. So new properties will actually have areas that are more bespoke. So even if you have a one bedroom flat, there'll be a, a purpose built area for home working. Yeah. I, I was going to say, Ralph, I don't know if you were aware of this, but our um, headquarters in Los Angeles, we were named uh, 2021 Innovative Workspace of the Year last year. And um, I'd love to claim how smart we are. And it was pure dumb luck that before the pandemic, we had designed our new headquarters to accommodate all the things that you had talked about without having any idea that the pandemic was coming. And we, it didn't feel so smart when we had our grand opening in the midst of the pandemic. You know, we, we had scheduled to have this beautiful grand opening and of course yeah. we couldn't have it because the pandemic happened. But you're 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 so right that, you know, uh, it will never be the same again, will it, in, in terms no. of workspaces? No, we're not going back, but anyway, it's interesting, isn't it? How, how the pandemic has forced change because actually there's things we just can't do when working from home, signing documents. Um, so it, it's forced this innovation, and it'll be interesting to see in the next year, as uh, you know, with the survey results, to see how um, whether people can keep up the pace of change when change isn't forced upon us. I, mean, I think that's a skill, possibly in your question as well, there, Marianne. It, it, it's it's can we keep pushing forward? Yeah, yeah. When f when fear isn't breathing down our neck, how motivated? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. I think um, that may conclude our Q&A session. Um, if I may hand back over to Marco for some uh, final remarks before we wrap up. For sure. Uh, thank you very much, Leslie, and uh, thank you to uh, all our panelists uh, here. Um, but so I would like to remark that uh, shortly, uh, if not just already now, um, a copy of the report uh, can be downloaded from our website. Correct, Leslie. Um, yes. And I want to, and I want to thank uh, not only uh, our panelists here, but uh, uh, also and very importantly, all the business leaders that uh, helped us shape this uh, um, very very good report, and where you can all see all the things that we discussed today in more detail. And I also want to thank our uh, subject matter uh, experts. Um, another another uh, point that I want to share is that uh, please watch out this space because um, we are not uh, going to finish here probably. There could be uh, other sessions, uh, there could be uh, other, uh, let's say, uh, analysis and discussions uh, about different angles of this survey. But uh, so watch this space and uh, uh, to see if and when we're going to see each other again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Evening. thanks, Marco. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks all. Good to see you all.